All right, welcome back to the program. Like you saw earlier, uh, it's uh, Finance Friday. So before we go home for the weekend, let's quickly uh, educate and also inform you about some personal finance uh, tips, uh, not just tips. Uh, it should be a lifestyle. Uh, joining me right now is Jimmy Tewe, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Jimmy Tewe Foundation. He's joining us virtually. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, good morning, Nancy. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. How are you doing? Very fine, thank you. Okay, let's get started. 2020 has been such a challenging, a brutal, a painful year. Um, call it whatever you want to call it. Perhaps a lot of people will have some of uh, the bad words or bad adjectives, so to speak, uh, to qualify 2020. Do you think that a lot of people also made money? Uh, in the year 2020? Well, yes, um, I would start with um, very humbly myself. Um, I think in our 10 years uh, operating as a business, um, last year was our most profitable year. We had, we had the highest revenue also last year. And so it would be, it wouldn't be wrong to, to say that people made money. And I, I mean, in my survey, um, in talking to several CEOs in, across different industries, I actually realized that a number of people actually made money last year including um, employees um, working where the businesses were able to pivot successfully um, last year. So they also got quite a bit of either promotions, profit sharing, and things like that. So while it is true that a number of people didn't have a great year because, again, their plans were premised on movement, um, quite a number of people were still able to do well, very well last year. And there's some industries, you know, blossomed, you know, particularly in the medical space, you know, in terms of their projections for the year. All of a sudden, they had to, and the pharmaceutical, for example, they had to provide a lot more solutions than, you know, they had provided before. So I think all in all, some people did make money last year, while some, some didn't, yes. So in essence, uh, there's always an opportunity in a crisis. It depends on exactly. um, which lens you're using to look at it. You shouldn't be myopic exactly. about exactly. Uh, the crisis. Now, for the, let's take you, for example, since you said you made a lot of money, uh, last year, and I also saw a lot of Forbes billionaires. They are, their net worth also increasing <laughs> last year, even when the whole world was uh, or was on a lockdown. Does it come yeah. from the fact that we should all understand how money works? Yeah, I think that one of the biggest lessons that 2020 taught us is the fact that you have a personal responsibility where your finances are concerned. Up until now, I think things were generally okay. I mean, I was watching you earlier. You have taken us through certain macroeconomic overviews, you know, for not just, not just the country, but even beyond Nigeria. And what we need to realize is that our microeconomy, where we live and where we operate, is actually, you know, influenced significantly by the macroeconomy. So last year, as at, you know, January, the dollar was still exchanging at maybe 360 naira, but right now in the black market, it's about 470 something and all that. And that has implications for an import based economy meaning that the raw materials for many businesses actually will be impacted also in that regard. So I think a lot of people are not aware. Of, of course, we have inflation that's risen also. So many economic indi I mean, I mean, uh, indices that have affected our personal space. And so you can't just sit down and hope for a good time and a good life. You have to take personal responsibility. So you mentioned um, about the stock exchange abroad where people are invested in certain stocks. I don't think globally we have investors many other you know investments going on because people began to look for alternatives for investments when you saw that the regular money market or capital market was not giving you the kind of returns that it used to give you before so right now even if you have two billion you're probably just getting 1.5 percent on that per annum you know from prior to that we will probably um, talk about double digit you know um in terms of the kind of returns you make so People are looking for alternatives. People are looking for things that are more stable, that can grow. And so you find out that they're maybe looking at long-term investments today. That's probably what contributed to that. You know, uh, I think the premise we should also talk about in terms of uh, making money, because we're looking at making, managing, multiplying your money, and also maintaining it. Because I also found out that you can also multiply your money at a time. You've seen a lot of billionaires, they've dropped from 
the billion billions down to nothing. So it's also about maintenance. But what are the principles of money? Do, uh, I w the, the concept of money, does it really have principles? Or is it just about waking up every morning and wherever you find yourself or anyhow as you go, I go follow the flow. <laughs> yeah. I get you. So, so, I mean, again, if it was by that, everybody would have quite some money probably coming into their hands. The reality about it is that, you know, the numbers, I mean, they say that Nigeria is the um, poverty capital of the world, as it were, you know, I mean, from, um, I mean, some research and all that. But the reality about it is the fact that you can't just say, I want money, I desire money. There are principles around money. So one of the most fundamental ones is that money is given to you as exchange for value that you deliver. So I ask people, you want money today. What did you sell today? You want more money tomorrow? What are you going to sell tomorrow? Because if you look at it, there are several ways I'm to make money by begging, which you know many times will bring a lot of embarrassment. You can get money by borrowing, but it's not sustainable because at a point in time, if you don't have inflow, then you are going to get into trouble. Or you can get money by offering your time, your skills, your competence as an employee in an organization. That's another option. That's option which I think is within the control of anybody is being able to make money. How people make money? If you want to make a millionaire, you know, just please work. You know, in economics, we always say all things to be equal. If you offer something for 2,000 Naira and you want to make 1 million Naira, you just need 500 people to buy it. Now, the buying is where the challenge is. People that find out, particularly in Africa, maybe even globally, are adverse to selling because the idea behind it is that I don't want to be rejected. In fact, I personally believe that the African culture trains people unconsciously to avoid embarrassment and you know rejection. Unfortunately, sales requires you to be able to know how to respond to rejection. But somebody doesn't want to buy something, there's a premise for it. Is it that they don't have the money? They're not in the mood for it. It's not what they required upon in time. And so when you see a rejection, rather than run away from it, what you're meant to do is being able to understand what the rejection is and how you can come back. A research, and I always talk about it, says that 80% of sales happens after you have sold to the same person seven to 12 times, meaning that you probably rejected about six times. So if you're not one person, I can sell. And I have people say to me, oh, Jimmy, I don't like selling. Well, if you don't like selling, you are not going to learn how to make money. Every business is selling something. So you that you are collecting a salary, you are collecting a salary because the business is selling. You want more money, you have to sell. That's another basic principle. Let's stop there for now. Mm. Okay, what's the concept of working for money and also making money work for you? Beautiful. Uh, the first one, working for money, basically talks about you engaging your physical energy in the conversion for a value. So what I mean by that is that if I'm doing a training, for example, now, that means that I am involved. And so I am involved in making that money. However, the concept about making money work for you is that I haven't done the training and I've saved up maybe 10 million there, I have some sort of investment portfolio that I can put money into. And from there, it's working for me where I'm able to get a particular return. So maybe, for example, on the average, I get 10% return, even though that's pretty low considering, uh, considering inflation. But if you get 10% on 10 million naira, that means you get 1 million naira coming in for you and you did not work for it. And that's the whole idea behind it. So really and truly, everybody should be involved in making money where you're engaged in something. Ultimately, managing it well so that you're able to multiply it through this various investment vehicle. You know, this, this concept about make, manage, multiply your money. I know there are a lot of books that have also been written with that same uh, a topic. Um, is it really about even reading books? Or is it really <laughs> about even listening to some of you guys in that space <laughs> than, than more of doing the hard work, more of doing uh, the labor, more of, you know, engaging in a day-to-day -day activity, either you're selling something, or you're selling a good, you're selling a product, or you're selling a service, you know? Yeah. Is, it, is, it more of, is it more of that, more practical than going motivating myself that oh this year is going to be a good year or praying praying it into into being praying money into being <laughs> like my yes religious yes. brothers and sisters uh, you have touched on uh, what, what yeah, probably one of 
the biggest challenges that we discuss is that has to meet the road. No matter how much you pump a tire, until the tire is rolled, it's not going to open. The main train learning, and that's good. Until you engage in activities, you're not going to begin to see the returns. And so what that means, in essence, that people go sit down in the for programs and all that. And we found out. It's the mindset that most people have. I would say this up a pro okay. program for poverty. Program for poverty. The program for doesn't allow you to be able to function effectively in a value delivery model. So what I mean by that is that somebody, let's even look at an organization. Somebody's in marketing and they say, well, go and market this product. And then when they get there, they're like, please, come, come and buy. Then the person says, I'm not buying. Then they say, please, if you don't buy, they're going to sack me. That person clearly has not seen the value in the product or service they have, and so they cannot convince people. The same thing also, I ask people that, you know, why are you not selling? Oh, they say, I try to sell. Nobody's buying. But everybody actually tries to sell. And many times, people don't buy. I have many products or services. I try to sell. People don't buy. When people don't buy, that's feedback. A lot of people are defeated internally. Oh, they say that nobody's by to their discouraged and discouragement does not bring advancement in any way so we find out that there are deeper issues so people for example we tell you that people are trained unconsciously by their environment and that's why you have to be conscious because there's a mindset required for prosperity for abundance for producing money you need to know for example oh, people say that there's no money anywhere that's a lie there is money everywhere particularly in nigeria any streets where even in the village somebody's building something now the question is is there money Yes. Is it coming to you? No. It's not coming to you because you have not positioned yourself to offer value to people. Now, I know that it sounds easy saying it, but you only build capacity by doing it. So you start selling. And I know too many people who started up last year, and they were, I mean, I know somebody, two pilots, that, you know, um, they couldn't fly. But they began to sell food. The husband was good in cooking. The wife was good in cooking. There was a lockdown. Neighbors don't like cooking. They began to sell food from there. I know a young man who was a chief financial officer in his school. The school was closed. Salaries were not paid for two months. And his wife could make small shops. They began to publicize it in the estate. And people began to buy, they began to grab 20,000 naira per day, then began to grow from there. So the question is, what are you bringing to the table? I find out, like you said, the mindset. Once there's a limitation with the mindset, you'll find out that even though there are too many things that we know that we're not doing, whenever you find out that you're not doing what you know, there is a limiting belief that you need to overcome on the inside for you to, to do it on the outside. Um, uh, uh, Jimmy, wow. I hope you can still hear me because the network is actually not being a bit friendly uh, right now. Okay, but I can hear you. Yes, uh, if we'll move over to the concept of managing money because you've talked about how to make money, which is an exchange for value. What value are you bringing to the table, either your good or your service or the, that product? How much value you bring will determine how much money you make. Uh, so let's move to yes. the concept of managing this money right now when it comes. Are there tips? Is there a practical worksheet in terms of managing uh, money so that perhaps I don't run out of it? Uh, managing money yes. for, m for more money to come in or for me to move into the, the stage of wealth. Beautiful. I think that the fundamentals still hold true. So we say, for example, that no matter how much you make, you should run on a budget. No matter how much money you have, you should run on a budget. I consider myself as an employee in my company. I earn a salary in my company, even though I have every right to go into the company account and blow all the money there. But no, I have. So sometimes I don't have money in my pocket, but there's money in the company account. It's as simple as that because the principle of delayed gratification is actually one of the major principles that determines whether you're going to be worthy or not. Remember that making money is not necessarily wealth. It is what remains after you have made money. So when you obey the simple law, for example, of putting at least 10% of all you earn aside consistently. Every time I ask people, can you imagine if for the last 10 years, you have put aside 10% of every income you have made in salaries, in what you sold, in um, gifts, if you put 10% aside, how much did you have now? And people are, people are like, I can't even calculate. It would be too much. And the only thing was that they did not have the simple discipline of putting 10% aside. And that 
is actually a mindset of somebody that wants to build well. So from budgeting to you know the ten percent, you know at least ten percent. I know people that put up to fifty percent of the income. As someone says, oh, my income is never is not enough. That is another mindset that limits people. If you earn thirty thousand naira per month, the truth is that is not enough. So that should tell you that you can actually put three thousand naira aside and work with twenty seven thousand naira. Okay, and then begin to think about how to increase your income. But when you say it's not enough and you spend it all, what you are saying is that you don't recognize that a major principle of finance is that a portion of your future is always in the money you receive today. If you always spend all the money in your hand, you will be hungry in the future. So it's about delayed gratification. So these are some simple things. And I ask people that do the simple things you know. Create, and there are too many platforms today that can help you. I know I, I was still talking to somebody yesterday. She said she puts aside 2,000 naira per day. You know, little things like that. You put 2,000 naira aside per day in 2021. By the end of the year, you have about 700 and, you know, 20, 70, 000, 000 naira that you did not have before. And you cannot begin to do something with that. So it, it starts with the basics. And do them, but this is the thing. Do them and then do them consistently over a period of time for compounding to now help you and become your friend. How do you get that discipline? Because it seems that it's easy just the way you're saying it, because we all know the, the principles of, of compound effect, at least in mathematics those days, we did what we call, is it compound, uh, what do they call it in arithmetic? I've forgotten, but something about compounding, and yeah. uh, you put two, two plus two like that, it, yes. it, you know, so, uh, but, but, yes, compound interest, that's it. You know, so how, how do you get to the point of discipline to get this done, that if I'm able to put 2,000 Naira away today, what will make me put the same 2,000 Naira away tomorrow? Or even if I make more money today, I can decide to, to increase it. Okay, I have more money. I can put 3,000 Naira away today. Not saying yes. that, okay, uh, I saw something on the way and I need to eat or I need to do this thing or my friend brought, bought a bag. Nancy, you've got to buy this bag because you know you can afford it. Just buy it. and <laughs> That discipline. So at what point yes. do I get discipline? How do I train myself? To be able to Beautiful. get some of I those things done. There's several things you can do, but let me just hone, hone in on one. is creating accountability systems that ensure you do it. So I find out, for example, that one of the most set of disciplined people, you'll be shocked, are artisans and people that are in informal businesses, mechanics, hairdressers and all that. And many of them have, you know, some sort of cooperative that they part mm -hmm. of where somebody walks True. every day to their store and asks them for 1000 or 2000 and if many of them tell, say, I don't eat until I've made that money because I know that by 12, this person will show up. Those people are probably more disciplined than those that work in many big organizations. And so the other thing is that today you have many platforms online. And many of those platforms can actually help you to put aside 2,000. It's an automatic debit. So it's always with debit that account. And I find that there are people that do this are always short and they can actually do it so. When you find you are struggling with something, put yourself in a position where you must do it. If you realize you spend all your money, the moment you make money every single month, the first activity is not to begin to spend. You sit down, apportion the money, and then you have an account that has an ATM. All the other accounts, you cannot withdraw on it. So it's a choice, first and foremost. Then it's a system, and then that's what breeds discipline. One thing I also recommend is that people that are doing this, this system, okay um, hang around the more that you do that the more you realize that you are able to do it also because he that works with the wise will be wise i always jokingly say that he that works with the rich will also be rich too mm. um I, I want you to comment on this concept of especially here in nigeria government for example comes up with we hear poverty alleviation strategies poverty alleviation policies. And I've heard a lot of people quarrel with that. Why not talk about wealth creation policies, things that will create wealth, <laughs> and not just about poverty creation, uh, poverty alleviation. Since we are the poverty capital of the world, how yes. is, is, is there a difference there, or is more and the same? Is more of the same, rather? Is poverty alleviation the same as wealth creation? <laughs> or it's about mentality? Well, what are the ways? Yes. One of the ways to validate anything is to check the results. And uh, if we look at, and while there may be well-meaning people in governments that are setting up all these, you know, different initiatives and all that, you find out that it seems to just get by, as it were. 
they are not really sustainable. You can't always just give 5,000 Naira or 20,000 Naira to people and expect them to be rich. The fact about it is that um, if you look at it, most of them will probably take that money and the indiscipline that exists before is what they're going to do now. What we find out really and truly, and personally, my view on it, and I see that there have been a lot of initiatives and some of them have been successful, is to create an environment for businesses to thrive. And I know that there's a lot of stuff on the ease of doing business and all that, but I think it's more difficult in 2021 to do business in Nigeria than last year. From power, even I, I know I'm spending more on power every single month, you know, so how much more somebody that cannot even afford it? So I think that the emphasis really should be on wealth creation where we are able to have business because businesses are what drive economies, whether I like it or not, to create the right environment. And I'm not talking about, I'm going to say many times, government will actually create programs, but in the implementation, it never really gets to those that are really the be true beneficiaries of it. I think that we need more initiatives that are actually working. You can't just hand out money to people and expect them to prosper. It does not work that way. To go to India, where they've done schemes like that, micro skills, you find out that they take their time to identify the right people that are the ones that should be the beneficiaries. And they find out that from there, when one business begins to grow, it hires five people, ten people. That is a lot of work. And so it's not just government, because the implementation many times is not government. We find out people that are actually getting the contract to do this and are not implementing them. So the question is, what accountability, what consequences, you know, when I give money to a body to implement a policy and I fund it and they're not doing it, then they should not be blacklisted in my own personal view so that that way people know that you have to do what exactly it is you're meant to do. Because the truth of is that it's dangerous to remain the cap of poverty capital of the world. There are too many implications, you know, where this is concerned. And I think that while government might be doing a lot, it's a lot around the implementation to ensure it's effective. That's what I think really matters at the end of the day. What do you think should be the role of education in terms of even financial literacy, personal finance that we've been talking about uh, at least in the last few minutes? What do you think should be the role of education in all of this, in, in setting the role of what? I didn't education, hear that. education, educating citizens? Oh, beautiful. Yes. What do you think okay, should beautiful. be the role? I, I think, I think if, you, if you look at it, any nation that prioritizes education, you find out that the poverty index is not very... Mm. low but you look go to countries that don't fund education it is clear you see the poverty this is high so there seems to be some sort of direct correlation between education because the truth about it is that you can't create value or let me put it this way you can only create value to the degree to which you have the capacity to and so you know lack of education actually no matter how much funds i put in your hands lack of education can limit your capacity to reproduce and create wealth so I think that education is an investment that is entitled. I mean, just this morning, I was speaking to somebody. We're talking about, you know, maybe you go to foreign countries. You find out that their public school systems are doing very well comparatively. And so the average child of anybody can have access to good education. And therefore, they can think. You say, oh, Elon Musk or their business is the richest in the world. There are no people that don't have a great mind. Their minds are activated. So, but if you come to our own environment, federal universities, state universities, you know, polytechnics and all that, you see the funding. And even the people that are even there, lecturers and all that, are they even giving their best? That's another question to ask. Right now, we are in some people that are going on strike. These things, whether I like it or not, have a compounding effect on poverty ultimately. So I think a good education does have a correlation to prosperity in the nation. All right, Jimmy, uh, if we're talking about education, what kind of education? Should it only be formal education? Uh, because when you were talking, what came to my mind is the Igbo apprenticeship system, which they call the Imwa hair system. We see a, yeah. lot, a lot of them that have gone through that system. A lot of them in Nigeria are billionaires today that even Forbes mm. are not tracking. Uh, if, even yeah. Forbes itself is not tracking, but they are billionaires even in dollars. They did not even yes. go to the formal universities or higher institutions, but they know yes. how businesses and they know how money work. So if we're talking yeah. about education, is it also about formal or can we also begin to expand uh, our financial education using even that system, for example, that Imwahia system, which has been said, which has been adjudged as the best VC uh, system 
in the world, venture capital system. So how should we inculcate that? I think, I think um, one of the things I've learned is that education is not today really formal or informal. It's more structured and unstructured. And I'll explain. The system you spoke about is actually a structured system. Mm. People know that I put my child to work as an apprentice under this person who sells car parts. He will work for this number of years. After that, he will do his freedom. That is almost graduation. So it's structured. And I think that today, because of the boundaries that have been removed, because last year we couldn't go to universities or to go to school. You could go online to school. Everybody has access to data. We are all being educated every day. The key is whether it's structured or unstructured. But speaking to what you're spoken about, I think that that is an amazing system because real education is not just dumping in information in the minds of people, which is what we have in many of our former institutions. It is really taking people through a process of transformation. And so the guy comes to the store every day, he learns discipline. The store must be open mm. by a particular time. He must always give account every day of what it is he has sold, what he has not sold. He must put money in the cooperative or the savings every single day. That guy unconsciously, his mind is working. When he gets his freedom, he begins to replicate the same thing also. So for me, I think that we should identify more structured education systems. And of course, leverage the unstructured ones. I was up to 3 a.m. this morning. I was reading by unstructured, reading for somebody abroad. So today, education doesn't have to be within the four walls of an institution. And even for those people that are doing that, I always advise them that the world is bigger than your university or your polytechnic. You have to learn. Learning must be a culture. And so whether it's through the system you mentioned or through any other system, I think that, and you know, we spoke about government earlier, all right? Sorry about this. I'm going to bring the light back now. <laughs> we spoke about government earlier. The fact about it is that whether you like it or not, we have to look for structured, which is the formal education, or even unstructured systems so that that way we are able to work together and build better institutions and learning for people. Okay, the concept of multiplying money. How do you grow your money, especially in a crisis? Uh, how, how do you do that? How do you multiply then also maintain it? You know, I, 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 I was listening to Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, Shaquille O'Neal, the, yes. you know, the great ba uh, basketballer. I watched the video yesterday. Oh, okay. So it seems we're in the same spirit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking about at a point he got like a ha-ha moment and his fortunes changed in terms of investment, in terms of multiplying his money. In so Google. Yes. Yeah, so how do you grow your money, more or less even grow it in a crisis such as we, we, we have right now? I, I think that, you know, financial literacy is key. Because a lot of people now, Nancy, look at this. Nigerians have lost so much money from Ponzi schemes. Mm. Think about it. Yeah. A lot of money. And so you find people willing to put money aside. They understand what it means to multiply. But they don't, they don't have financial literacy enough to understand that there are fundamentals required to understand. So somebody comes to you and tells you, oh, bring 10,000 naira, you will get 72,000 naira in 72 hours. And you just put your money there. You, you lack financial literacy. You, 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 you are a gambler <laughs> to just put it you know, at the list and all that. So what I mean by that is this, that people need to become more educated in terms of understanding how to invest, how to invest. What to check? So people will say, oh, buy land anywhere. Land will always appreciate. That is not always true. Not all lands appreciate across the world. That's the reality about it. There are factors that will determine whether la land will appreciate or not. Development is what brings appreciation. So there are some places that you should put money. And some places, so I'm a, from a particular village. Putting money in my village at this time, except the state government changes its policies begins to invest is a waste of time except i just want to have a country home not an investment so i think the key is financial literacy we need to help people to understand fundamentals of investment and then they can make better investment choices there are too many people making money today from forex but there are too many people losing money from the same forex there are people making money from cryptocurrency who are losing money in cryptocurrency there are people making money from real estate we're losing money from real estate. So there are too many options today that are available. We just need to put more financial information. Mm. We just have a few more minutes uh, to go. In the midst of all of this, at least we've taken it from make, manage to multiply. Is there a way 
that I can also track my growth, especially this 2021 financial growth, this 2021. Yes. So that at the end of the year, I can say, oh, Nancy, I'm a better person uh, this mm -hmm. year, even uh, in my finances. The simple way to do that is also part of your personal um, discipline and has caught, falls under the managed money part, mm -hmm. and which has to do with you having, I mean, companies have their financial statements. Every business, even SMEs are encouraged to have the financial statements. You should have your personal financial statement. So I try, for example, I try to make most of my transactions through my bank because that's an automated way of keeping all my records. So I try to use my ATM and I try to fill in the description so that I can trace every single transaction and at the point in time i can sit down and analyze and say this is how well i'm doing the same thing also with your investment portfolio there are people that invest and can't even remember oh i think i put money in this place i think i put hundred thousand you don't think you must have record and that's part of the personal financial discipline that is there i think people need to keep records and track it that's the only way that businesses actually do that by their record keeping and that's one of the ways you can actually do it also Finally, Jimmy, what, what do you think is your outlook or what's your outlook uh, for the Nigerian business environment this year and perhaps the entrepreneurial uh, environment? I know you've been speaking to a lot of people, perhaps small business owners and all of that, helping them build structures. Uh, what you've been doing, at least in the last few months or so, uh, what can you deduce from that, that where would we be at the end of 2021? Would we be better even... Uh, in our finances or even our businesses? All right, personally, I believe that the outlook for the year is actually good from my own point of view. And when I say good, it's it's not easy. What that means is that we need, we're getting into some sort of stability around this COVID issue. So COVID is not going, as it were. We're probably going to have to find a way to live life while it's there, getting vaccines and all that. And so people should begin to now hold in to understanding the business environment. Clearly, it is different in 2021 than it was in 2019. And so the real, when I coach businesses, what I would look is looking again at their industry, the dynamics in their industry, understanding it, and now leveraging that to see where are the new opportunities. I said, for example, that we made more money as a business last year and coming into this year. It's simple because we are able to pivot online and provide our solutions to people online. Even this year, we realized that the needs of people have changed significantly. We have altered our products and services to meet the real needs of our clients. So the basics of business apply. You must understand the needs by carrying out some sort of survey in your field, knowing what the needs are, creating products and services, and then offering it through sales or marketing. That is the way you can actually grow your business. So for me, it's a good year if you can understand how your business, your industry operates, and know what you need to do to be able to pipe up into that. At this point, Jimmy, we'll draw the curtains uh, for today. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. Are you still there? Uh, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the show uh, today. And I hope that our audience uh, have gotten a few uh, tips uh, from there. Thank you very much for uh, watching. I've been speaking with Jimmy Tewe, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Jimmy Tewe uh, Foundation. That's the much we can take today and this week on the program. Please join us again next week, on Monday, bright and early, 11 a.m. I'll be here again. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be. Be the change that you want to see. Don't forget to wear a mask. I'll see you all next week. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below, turn on post notification to follow all our updates.